OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the United Nations, or a multitude of other very reliable organizations, I'm constantly uh, astonished by how different the truth is from what government tells us. And uh, the, uh, the only way we're going to have a, a really good country is if we um, have the honest material to work with. And one of the things I did in, in The Truth About Canada is compare Canada with the 34, there's now 34 countries in the OECD, excuse me, and compare Canada, how do we stand in a whole variety of things. You know, you people in BC, you'll please excuse me for saying this, you should be ashamed of yourselves for allowing the degree of poverty that you allow in, in this province, higher than any other province in Canada. How can you do that? You're one of the wealthiest provinces in the country, and you, you have the highest child poverty rate and the highest adult poverty rate of any province in this country. Why do you do that? Why do you allow that to happen? Same thing is true with the national government. We have the ninth highest GDP, gross domestic product per capita in all the world. And if you can imagine, we're 23rd in terms of poverty compared to other countries. Ninth highest in wealth and 23rd in poverty. And uh, we have, contrary to the BS you get from the Fraser Institute and places like that, we have one of the lowest tax ratios as a percentage of gross domestic product of all the developed countries in the world. Well, there's a whole bunch of other things I could, I could mention as well. But um, I happen to think that we're darn lucky to be in this country, whether we were born in this country or whether we became naturalized Canadians. I was at the citizenship court the other day you know, watching four of my young friends from Indonesia mother, father, and two children being sworn in. And it was an incredibly emotional experience. I, I've been a citizenship court judge in Edmonton for many years. And this is the first time I saw that happen here in Vancouver. And it was a wonderful experience. The people there from 77 different countries becoming Canadian citizens. And they all recognized how darn lucky they were to become Canadian citizens. And we're incredibly lucky to be here. But <clears throat> we have a problem that, as, we took, as they showed in the film, that very few of our friends and our relatives, people that we know, think it's important to get involved in politics. So who does that leave politics and the decisions about the making of our country up to? To people who have a vested interest, to people who are more interested in making money than in uh, really good social programs that are fair and equitable and just. And um, <coughs> if you don't get involved in, in the political system, you leave it up to people who really don't give a darn about anything other than their own welfare and their own benefits that they can get in the political system. So if I have one message to give you tonight, it's, it's that try and find the time to get involved. It's, uh, it's not that difficult. When I speak to high school audiences, I say, look, any one of you in this room who can spend 10 minutes on the phone a night for two or three weeks bringing people to a meeting of the uh, political party of your choice in the constituency of your choice, you can elect your mother's president of the constituency association, your boyfriend as treasurer, uh, your cousin as secretary, and whatever, because that's how few people come out to annual meetings of political parties. And you know, there's no reason in the world why you can't take over any party uh, in, in this <laughs> province and any party in the country. Um, we've got a lot of really wonderful people in this Country. I'm constantly astonished by how many nice people uh, write me or 
to send me really nice letters telling me how much they care about our country and how much they love Canada. And uh, my children are the same thing. They, they just really, I've got four daughters out here in, in uh, Vancouver. I'm, I happen to be a brilliant engineer. I've got four daughters and four grandsons. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't easy to do. <laughs> but uh, my kids love this country. And uh, I've tried in my writing and in the research that I do to show people how important it is to get involved. And uh, my next book will be five things that Canadians must do for a better Canada. Um, the major problem we have in this country is that so much of our media is controlled by people who are way, way over here on the political spectrum. I don't like people being conservatives. Some of, some of my best friends are conservatives. But I do like people who are falling off the, the right edge of the globe, as I said in the film, and people who want us to get closer to the United States, and people who want us to adopt more American values and more American programs, and be more like Americans. I don't like that as an idea. I don't think we need that. I think we can do much better ourselves by establishing our own values and by uh, being independent and being an example to other countries uh, in the United Nations and in other world organizations. Uh, <clears throat> there's no reason in the world why we can't do a heck of a better job than we have been doing. Uh, many of my close personal friends, Peter Newman, for instance, or Lawrence Martin of the Daily Mail, for instance, believe that four years from now, after four years of Harper majority governments, Canada will be unrecognizable. There'll be so many profound changes. Well, the change has already started. Uh, the government announced that we were going to have a referendum on the wheat board, and the referendum showed that the majority of wheat farmers wanted to continue the wheat board, and yet the Harper government is abolishing the wheat board. And there are many other examples in the short period that they've had a majority government. Wait, there's a whole bunch of other things coming up that are going to really change Canada in a very bad way for democracy and for our ability to have a better country. And it looks like, whether you like it or not, we're probably in for eight years of Harper majority government now because the Liberals are so weak and the uh, question, of course, whether the NDP could ever become uh, the government is something that could be debated for hours. But the point, again, is we're in for a period of change. And it's not to change for the better. But if we get enough people involved in politics, if we change the political system, if we had a, a uh, really fair proportional representation system that exists in over 80 countries already, we look, the way, the way the system works now doesn't reflect the will of the people when they go on and vote. It doesn't in any way reflect the, the will of the people. And so uh, let's change the political system Let's, for goodness sakes, get rid of the, the, the majority control of the media by so small number of people. That's, that's not democracy. It's not democracy when somebody owns the Vancouver Sun and the Vancouver province and a couple of nearby television stations, etc. That has nothing to do with democracy. It's not democracy when one small group owns all the newspapers in Saskatchewan and all the newspapers in New Brunswick. That's not democracy at all. Democracy is having fair distribution of ownership and control of the media so that Canadians get the opportunity to have a variety of opinions that, uh, that uh, reflect, more closely reflect, how the majority of Canadians feel. Well, <coughs> I'm sorry the film took so long tonight, and uh, it's getting late, so um, 